not going to be very long this morning, but I just wanted to share with you some reflections, really, on this Remembrance Sunday. Um, I don't know whether you will recognize this guy. Does anybody know who that is? Ask Trevor if he knows. Do you know that? It's not you, is it? No. <laughs> that, that guy is an interesting guy. His name is Lieutenant General Sir William Dobby. And uh, he was known as Dobby of Malta. And he was Governor General of Malta during the Second World War. At a time when the defense of Malta was really, really in its darkest hour. The Italian forces had overwhelming uh, superiority, both in numbers and fire power. Yet, over that period of time, Malta didn't fall to the enemy. And uh, for their courageous stand as an island people, the whole island was awarded the George Cross. It was a very famous time in the Second World War. Indeed, historians still can't understand, really, why the Italians failed to take the island, given its strategic position. But during the campaign, during that dark time in that island's history, Dobby, a committed Christian, came to a point of frustration, weakness, a time when he turned again to his Christian faith and made a discovery that really helped him through that difficult time. He discovered that what the psalmist says was true. God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. His first special order of the day, defining policy, governing the defense of the island, read, the decision of His Majesty's government to fight until our enemies are defeated would have been heard with the greatest satisfaction by all ranks of the garrison of Malta. It may be that hard times lie ahead of us, but however hard they may be, I know that the courage and determination of all ranks will not falter, and that with God's help we will maintain the security of this fortress." I therefore call upon all officers and other ranks humbly to seek God's help and then in reliance upon him to do their duty unflinchingly. Those were the words of a Christian general engaged in the height of battle during the Second World War. His Christian faith was a reality when under fire. He looked to God for strength in the tasks that he had to do. Although Dobby survived Malta, uh, the war took its toll, and he was actually invalided out of uh, the army and brought home in 1944. Sadly, we take the sacrifice of the many men and women who served in the forces during the war for granted we too easily forget the price of the peace that we enjoy today. So for me, Remembrance Sunday is a very, very important day. A day when it's good for us to remind, particularly a younger generation, just of the privilege we have in this country of enjoying peace. It's good that we take time to remember. How is your memory? You've got a good memory. My wife jokes with me. She says, I haven't got a memory. I've got a forgettery. I read about two elderly ladies. They've been friends since their 30s, but they were now well into their 90s. Maybe you know them, Trevor. I'm not sure. But uh, they still got together a couple of times a week uh, to chat and to reminisce. And one day they were together and one of them said... uh, You know, we've been friends for many years. Please don't get mad at me, whatever you do. But for the life of me, I can't remember your name. Please tell me, what what, what is it? And her friend sat there and glared at her. And she continued to glare at her. Three, four minutes passed. 
And finally, she looked at her friend and she said, how soon do you need to know? <laughs> Lapses of memory. How many of you mislay your mobile phone? Your wallet? Your keys? All sorts of things. We forget so easily. It's part of life. I was relieved to find out that I'm not the only one who forgets things. Everyone does at one time or another. According to some research, these are the things people often most forget. 83% of people admitted to forgetting names. Have you ever been in that difficult situation? It's why in Christian circles everybody goes around saying, Morning, brother. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Names. 60% admitted to forgetting where something is. Wallet. Phone, keys, telephone numbers. I've lived in Risca two years. I still couldn't tell you what our home telephone number is. I know what my mobile number is. But I couldn't tell you my home telephone number. Words. I think this one, the older you get, I'm finding this. Things are on the edge, to be a tongue, and it's like, mm. It's so easy. 49% admitted to forgetting what was said. That's why we have minutes in meetings and things like that, isn't it? To remind us. Faces. 42% admitted to forgetting faces. And 38% admitted to forgetting whether or not you've just done something. How many times have you gone back and checked the door to see if it's locked? How many of you are sitting there right now thinking, oh, how long is he going to be how many of you are thinking, did I switch the oven on? What temperature did I put it on? I'll finish quickly, don't worry. I'm not old enough to remember the Second World War. But I'm very conscious there are folk here this morning who do. Who, who lived through that time. My grandfather uh, lived through and was involved in the Second World War. The thing that always struck me about Tom, he never talked much about it. He didn't have stories that he'd come out with. I do remember him once telling me how he was walking through a field in single column one day and an enemy shell fell on the soldier behind him. The man was gone. A mother's son for whom the family would grieve. General Sherman, the American Civil War general, once said of war, war is hell. How true that is. My mother recalls that her father returned from the D-Day landings and he came into the house and she didn't recognize the man who was stood in front of her. Sarah has a friend uh, whose father was a captain on one of the ships uh, in the Falklands conflict and when he came back, his hair had changed color. He'd gone gray during that struggle. Yet my grandfather and Sarah's friend's father were the lucky ones. They survived. Many of their friends, and I guess for some of you who are here this morning, many of your friends didn't make it. Through the Great Wars, through Iraq, Afghanistan. And I'm conscious, Dave, for you today, this will be a time to remember. Today, we recall the millions of servicemen and servicewomen who gave their lives. In the Great War, in the Second World War, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and various other wars and battles since, so that we could have peace today. If only for two minutes. The ability to remember is a wonderful gift. Some of our memories are, no doubt, happy. We can recall wonderful experiences. It's great that you were able to take photographs this morning. Because photographs are brilliant, aren't they? To remember. You will remember today. Because you will remember how she cried. And you thought, oh, and it's fine. We've had a great time of dedication with baby Emma. It's a precious thing. Remember it. And you'll remember other family events and things that you've done, holidays that you've just enjoyed, 
places you visited. And with the remembrance of those things, ah, your stomach turns over a little bit and you smile and you think, oh, that was brilliant. With other remembrances, with other memories, there'll come a tear. Because you'll remember sad things, sad times. For you as a family, we remember baby Henry, who died last year. And for others of us, times of remembrance like this bring to mind colleagues that have passed away. Bring to mind loved ones who may not have died in war, but we nevertheless remember them. Even though the Second World War ended, what, 69 years ago? And the First World War some 96 years ago? And British troops have now recently withdrawn from Afghanistan? It's important that we remember that many still bear the scars of war today. It's good for us to remember those who fought for their country. I was thrilled on Friday evening to be able to be part of a service here which saw this church full as we came to remember the fallen. And we came as a community into this chapel to give thanks to God for their sacrifice. But it was good to remember those who have fought for their country and carry with them the scars and to remember them in our prayers. Today is a day when we say thank you. Thank you to those who made the sacrifice so we can be here in relative freedom, security, and peace. We remember the work of the Royal British Legion. Many of us are wearing poppies. We thank God for their work, working to alleviate suffering amongst ex-servicemen, and we give generously to that cause. And as we meet in this church this morning, these thoughts of sacrifice bring us back to the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the battlefield of Calvary. Jesus put it well when he said some stuff recorded for us in one of the books in the New Testament, the Gospel of John. And Diana's going to come and read for us a little bit out of that when Jesus talks about these things. I'm going to hand over to Diana. John chapter 15, verses 9 to 13. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You notice that last little bit there. Thanks, Diana. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. People can think that this whole Christianity stuff and Jesus and death on a cross and all of that is some, well, at best some religious mumbo-jumbo, or the idea that it's for a special set of people, for religious people. And yet the way Jesus describes his self-sacrifice upon the cross is that he is one laying down his life for his friends. It's interesting that there on the battlefield of Calvary, in many ways we remember that Jesus didn't just give his life for his friends, but for his enemies. Man's wickedness, that human propensity that there is to always muck things up. Can you identify with that? We all do stuff we know we shouldn't do, think stuff that we shouldn't think, say stuff we shouldn't say. Coupled with what can only be described as some of the downright evil that we see in the world. All of that is brought together and summed up in one word in the Bible. It's that word sin, that which separates us from God. And Jesus comes to deal with that stuff, that sin, that rubbish, 
a perfect for the imperfect. One who comes to take our place. And in so doing, reconciles humanity to God. Brings God's enemies to be his friends. If you go away from the service with nothing else this morning, I hope and pray you go away with this idea ringing in your minds. You can be God's friend. This stuff matters. As you remember today, as you think about peace and reconciliation, as you think about these themes of sacrifice, if you watched the service from the Royal Albert Hall last night, these words were all used in the context of that service too. As you mull these things over, realize wherever you are at in life, whatever's going on, God loves you. And he wants you to be his friend. To do that, we simply need to welcome Jesus to be part of our lives. One of the joys for me of sharing a dedication like this is that a family is inviting the church, yes, but God to be part of their lives. They're saying thank you for all that God has given them in the birth of this precious one. The Apostle Paul writes again about, uh, the Apostle John, sorry, writes again about these things earlier on in his book. Diana's going to come and read that little bit for us too. John chapter 1, verses 6 to 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God. Thanks, Diana. As many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Baby Emma is so vulnerable. She needs mum. She needs dad. She needs big sister Lois. She needs us. Needs our help. This family needs our help, our encouragement. We need help. We need encouragement. We need strength to face life's battles. And I'll tell you this much, it's tough enough with faith. I have no idea how people manage without. God longs for us to know him. And for us to be counted as his friends. And there is that opportunity for us on this Remembrance Sunday to thank God for what he's done for us and to remember that and to let that make a difference in our lives. Today's a wonderful occasion to celebrate all that God has given to this family and to remember the sacrifice of those who gave their lives in the service of this country. The former Bishop of Birmingham, Bishop J. L. Wilson, who was a Japanese prisoner of war in the Second World War, recommended three thoughts for us all to carry in our hearts on Remembrance Sunday. And I leave these with you. They are that we should be thankful for the sacrifice of others. That we should be dedicated to work for peace and justice in the world. And that we should be sorry for human sin and evil.